from the postman and today we are feeling religious and Mash Beats released an album titled This Is Religion on the 25th of November. I am the postman and welcome to Posting the Diary Room. Mash Beats has been one of the most consistent producers in South Africa over the past few years and he comes back with an album titled This Is Religion. It features the likes of Magyar the Boy, Tato Soul, Marcus Harvey as well as Rasty and many more of course. So this is an album that's like balance between emerging acts as well as established acts at the same time. So here he even tapped into different types of sounds. It's not the traditional hip-hop sound that we usually know mash beats for. So without wasting any more of the time, let's just get into today's review. <laughs> uh, I'm tapped in with my God and I pray every single time. But This Is Religion opens up with the song titled Optimistic. It features Maclera Dope Boy as well as Words, who had a really short verse, man. I think Words here had a really short verse. I think it was like around 15, 10 seconds. And I think the verse could have had more substance, something for us to just bite on, you know, and, um, and just be moved by it. But it didn't happen because I just had the feeling that maybe Words could have like kick-started his uh feature and that would cross over to 2023 but it didn't happen that way i'm quite disappointed in words if it's there and i just feel like i just had more expectations for words coming into this album because it's a mash production you know and uh my clear dope boy is always gonna he's always gonna talk about things that matter to him and in this specific song he just gives us like a brief history lesson of where he comes from and he just talks about how Black people were just institutionalized and moved into the township. You know, something really uh, worth talking about, you know, because we are still trying to identify who we are as South Africans since apartheid happened. And um, yeah, so Maclera Topo even narrates the pathway for the next song, which is Never Ride. And he even quotes the, the lyrics from the song. He says, these niggas fake, these niggas never write. So this is indicative of how well sequenced and how well structured the album is because it was like really thought through. It's not like a typical God did DJ Khaled album. This was an album that was like, you know, thought through. He sat down and he didn't just compile a bunch of songs. And, you know, that's one thing we're always going to expect. We're always going to get from Mash Beats, you know. He, he, he really is about the work and he really does the work. And so he even has the song... That really surprised me. And I think this is a song that's like one of the best songs in this specific album. It's a song called Make It Out Alive. It features Raspy as well as Moozy and Yams on the pro uh, on the production side. But um, yeah, so you even hear the, the influence of Yams in this specific song when you hear like the piano-like bass line or the bass. Um, yeah, so it just complements the Afrocentric feel that the song already had. And I mean, I guess like this is a typical Moozy song. And I think the thinking behind this specific song was Moozy. Like he wanted to tap into the sound Moozy does. And what better way than to call like the person who's really good at this. You know, he even called Raspy who just like just brings everything up, you know. And she just gives us the, the, the hope that we really need. Because this is a song of hope. And Moozy just compliments Raspy really well here. And I'm really interested in hearing like a bit more from them because I just feel like they could give us, you know, something really interesting because I think Raspy is like a versatile act because she's always trying these different genres, you know, and she's really good at it, you know. And I just basically feel like if you like a singer, you can generally do anything. You can even sing on hip hop beats, Afro beats, uh, even uh i'm a piano so she's really like multi-talented in that specific spectrum and yeah man i'm really interested in this specific sound and i think i need to tap into more of Moozy's sound and yeah this is one of the best songs in this album for me and um yeah so tune in and just listen to make it out alive and the third song here is religion so religion I think I heard Mash Beats in an interview with Daily Capsule. He mentioned that this is where the title of the song was born. Like uh, Tato So was doing his verse and he just mentioned to, he just mentioned uh, this is religion. And Mash Beats just, you know, just decided to rock with the title This is Religion. It's quite significant and the story is just like wow. But 
In this specific song, Tato Soul just talks about how he's just walking on a glass to just reach a better vision. Like, you know, he's just walking on glass just to reach a better vision. And he just talks about people who are scared of him. So it's like a typical Tato Soul verse where he's just going to tell us about like, you know, how he just blew up, not even blew up, but like how he grew up and um, so forth. So this is like a, a song that's like, it has a low tempo feel. There's not much to the song besides the Tato Soul verse. But we need to mention that for the very first time, it's not like the very first time, but like for the, for the first time in a while, Tato Soul had like a, a an English verse, you know. It's not really newsworthy, but it's always interesting to hear Tato Soul just rap in English because people are always crying that, yeah, he's always doing these two languages, but why doesn't he do something different? And uh, so here he did something different and it's really, it sounded really solid. Another interesting feature for me was Joda Hosi, and I feel like Joda Hosi here was an interesting feature because the first time I heard of Joda Hosi was when she released Truth Is, and I think it was about in 2020. And this was like during a time where I was just, you know, in my feelings, going through something, and she was there, you know, just to make me relate and just drag me out of that, you know, dark hole that I was in, in terms of, you know, relationships or you know all that nitty gritties that you guys don't need to know but yeah on this song she's she's featured on a song titled uh triple four jordan's interlude and she just handles it really well she just talks about how she's like struggling to get over her ex like she can't seem to get over her ex and i mean what better way than to talk about your I don't know your 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 struggles with overcoming your ex and then just doing it on a mash production, you know. You can always do whatever you want to do on a mash production. And I mean we've seen it with A Reese where he just came on with like the hardcore bars as well as Tato Soul. We've seen it with Raspy and Moody just just you know giving us a, a you know just a vibe, you know. But again, this is a really good song because she invites us as the listeners to just relate with her and she is I don't know. I don't. I don't want to say crying, but she's just, you know, she's just inviting us just to like cry with her. Just cry with me if you relate, and um, just sing along to the song. And it's a really good song because even the 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 beat itself just like matches like the the mood of this specific song. Like that's one thing Mash Beats is really good at. Like he gives you a beat that matches your mood. And I figure Joda Hosi when she was making the song, she just wanted to like vent, and yeah, so. Even another guy that we haven't heard from in a really long time. We haven't heard from Clyde in a really long time. And he comes back. And I think as he comes back, he comes back with a song titled Keep Love Young, you know. And um, Keep Love Young is a song where he's just talking about this woman who he just wants to... Like, he really likes this woman, but he wants to try different things with her. And he details some of the things he wants to do to her. And... Um, so it's interesting to hear Clyde come back into the fold because even the title for me is interesting because I'm wondering why why the specific title because I think uh, in 2018 he dropped an album title uh, Keep Love Young while he was at Ambitious and I think he's out of Ambitious right now and recently he tweeted that he's dropping uh, uh, an album of an album of the year contender in 2023 which I have no doubts about after hearing like Keep Love Young because Clyde is like that guy that's going to make you text your ex and just, you know, um, yeah, text your ex, send that whiskey text just because of how good he is, you know, like he, he like, like Joda Hosi, they invite you to, you know, relate with me. And um, so I think that's the significance of the love theme that keeps appearing in this specific album. And then, yo. I think it's quite really interesting to note that um, I'm really um, disappointed in two specific songs that were released before the album dropped. It's CBD as well as Sail in the Head. So Sail in the Head and CBD were released after like the Never Ride Run, like after the, the remix was done. And yeah, so now it's album time, album mode, whatever. They dropped a song titled Sail in the Head with Tato Soul. So, I, for me, it's like one of the worst songs in this specific album. And um, Tato Soul just, it was an uncomfortable listen for me. And Tato Soul just talks about how 
it just talks about the gangsterism in Paley, you know, the parties, all that nitty gritties. But I couldn't focus on that just because I was feeling uncomfortable while listening to this specific song. And I was really not sure if I was really looking forward to this album. But now that it's out, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm at ease. I'm at ease because it makes sense why they dropped Selling the Hit first. And CBD because I think the, the the sounds even you know the the, the both horrible but they are far in a sense you know the you know I didn't like the, the the songs but um yeah basically because I was you know not the target market and I had my doubts because Never Right is a really good song and now you drop Ceiling the Head as well as CBD and CBD is a really really it offered another awful like listen for me. Um, I didn't really like the song. And I mean, obviously, my player is always going to talk about things that matter to him. He even pays homage to the late Ricky Ray, you know, who we all love. And even mentions that, uh, even makes reference, not even mentions, he makes reference of Chinua Achebe. And Chinua Achebe is like someone who wrote uh, the book, Things Fall Apart. And I think with these two songs, things almost fell apart. But again, Things were saved when we had It's Bad. And remember, when It's Bad came on, I was already feeling like, yo, things or like things could have been going bad for MASH at this specific point. Because remember, at this point, the album wasn't even out yet. But just from hearing the two songs, it just felt like, hey, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Um, we have Flo Jones Jr., we have K Kid and Maclera Dope Boy. I really have to be honest, I haven't listened much to K Key. I haven't heard much of her. But as far as this song is concerned, she has like a really solid verse. And Flo Jones Jr., who's like the rookie of the year. I first heard of Flo Jones Jr. when he he released the song um, Stay Soft with, uh, or when he was featured on the song Stay Soft with Slick, MT, and 25K. Uh, he did that. Never go lamba, you know. Um, he has a really dope voice, man. Like the voice that Flo Jones Jr. possesses is really appealing, especially in the South African markets. I think we lacked someone who had that young thug, you know, original. Because I think it would be interesting to hear like young thug just rapping in his, you know, native language, like a Zulu language, you know. And he just gives us that young thug feel and he's really good at what he does, you know. And in this specific verse, or in this specific song, like his verse was just about how we had no plan B and he was just at home, you know, a few months ago, just stuffing noodles, you know, he was struggling, you know, and I think his life actually changed after Stay Soft and which led to me even calling him the rookie of the year, you know, because he's worked his ass off, you know, over the course of this year and uh, Matlera Topo even comes into the fold and, you know, he gloats, you know, he even says that he's the best rapper in South Africa. Well, for me, I, I don't have any problem with him saying that because I just feel like if you have an insane feature run like that, like that started in 2019, a feature run from 2019 all the way till, 20, till 2022, I think you're allowed to say whatever you want to say, man, on these specific beats. And I mean, yeah, man, especially if you, even, even if you have like a, a verse that sounds like the verse of the year or like the verse of the year for 2022, you can even say, I am the best rapper alive. You know, I, I'm going to allow you to say that because you've proven to us, you know, there's the work done, especially even if you released like a, an album titled Diaspora, which was like really solid. Um, But that's not why we're here. We're here to discuss Mash Beats album. And yeah, it's bad. You know, it's bad. Um, That's how I was feeling with this album. I was feeling like, yo, it's bad, you know. and And then... We go back, you know, we go back to that, uh, that, that, that theme of love comes back, you know, we go back to that theme of love that keeps reappearing in this specific album. Uh, so on Triple H, we have Una Rams talking about this wonderful lady that he wants to spend his money on. Because in recent times, I think in the world, we've had like uh, a gender war where like men are not willing to spend on women and women are saying, yeah, this is a brokey, you know. And just when a Rams just comes forth and just says to this girl, you know, you all you need to do is just say the word and then I'll buy it for you. You know, it's really interesting because this is a really good song and I did not expect Uno Rams on a mesh production. 
but he's also not someone who's like who who has like shied away from like the hip hop front in recent times. We've heard him on different features, but he's like always on the singing end. So I think it's also interesting to hear him and Marcus Harvey, uh, uh, who else, Muzi on a match production, you know, because I think also Marcus Harvey is someone who has like built a connection with Tato Soul, especially over the mic. Um, on All I Need, they come together and they just, you know, the chemistry that they had on uh, Kick It With You comes back and it, it, it sounds even alive, like the spark sounds brighter, the spark is more solid. And here, Tato Soul just talks about how he's just like grinding too hard for the money and he's just moving too fast. Because you may remember that Tato Soul's first album was meant to be his last album because... Um, yeah, he was at a point where he was probably at a point where he was done with the music, but uh, God just decided, you know, you're gonna blow up with this album, and then he blew up, you know. And on Life is Gangster, they did um, kick it with you, and it's a really, really good song that they did together. And I think Marcus Harvey always like a, a joint project, Marcus Harvey and Tato So always like a joint project in future. And yeah, hopefully, you're gonna review that and just you know, say what we think about the album, and yeah, so. After the war, you know, now we, we like at the love feel like we're feeling blue. And then, yeah, now we are here at um, after the war. After the war is a really, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good song. And it features like, it's a start started lineup. Basically it features Black Myth. It features um, Tyson Sabatelli, who had an interesting year in 2022. And it features Halo Yangami. Tato so so yeah Tyson Sabatelli just simply uh just I don't know he just talks to his haters and he just pays homage to his old friend Lisa who sadly passed away so basically here he just talks about like how he's been feeling and um just reflects on the the people that we've lost along the way and I think Tyson Sabatelli is also that guy you know and he just is all about the work he's never into the the, the nitty gritties that happen in the industry and he just comes back when he needs to do the work as well as Tato Soul you know and Black Myth man I was really impressed with Black Myth because this is like my first time being introduced to like what Blacksmith or Black Myth is about and when I heard him on this specific song where he like closes the curtains or on this song he just like sums it all up you know, he's singing with his beautiful voice. And I think over here with this specific album, I think Mash Beats was like giving uh, a lot of people like the, the potential to just like showcase their vocal uh, prowess, you know. And I think Black Myth and um, everyone who was singing in this specific project did exactly that, you know. And he didn't basically give them, you know, themes, you know. Like no one was forced to do anything. Like everything just sounds genuine you know and then we have cannot stop me um like i have so many favorite songs in this specific album um but i'm not impressed with a few songs of course but um i think cannot stop me is also like uh one of the best songs on this specific album because we, here we have rappers turned singers turned singers rappers you know like it's it's a it's a it's a maza you know it's like a, a a spectacle of some sorts because here we have singers who are rapping you know like we have tron and uh una rams rapping they're giving us like intense rapping stuff you know like they're like even giving us cocaine bars ferrari bars you know and i think they really sounded solid and um it was really exciting to hear them just you know have that go on a, you know, a beat where they just like, you know, they're using like raps, flows, you know, all that stuff. And I think I'm really interested in, and I'm looking forward towards hearing uh, uh, Una Rams rap more and Tron rap more because even Tron just does this thing where he just, you know, he breathes on the mic, you know, he moans on the mic, whatever he does, whatever he does, like it's really weird to me, but it's really amazing at the same time. And um, I think here, yeah, like, come on, man. This is a solid song because they do everything that they really do and they also rap for us and i think also them spending a lot of time around the rappers has like grazed on them it's it's really significant at the same time and just to like sum it all up as i've mentioned tato so and marcus harvey just have a significant uh relationship on on the mic and it's just evident you know i think everything just starts 
in the background and then eventually the public will just decide you know and um these are people who have like great chemistry and it shows you know and even tato soul does this thing of uh i don't know he just he just overuses the word same like every bar or in the middle of every bar there's like the word same which is like really interesting from tato soul's point of view because he is like a really great wordsmith he has an insane pen uh really introspective at the same time and i guess man um there's nothing really much to say about the never write remix because we all have our own opinions about the never write remix and there's really not much to say about the never write remix besides mentioning that uh pff, words had the best verse there and matlero topoy had the verse of the year in 2022 and also to even like wrap up the 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 idea or the note of the sequencing of the album like matlero topoy even adds no not matlero topoy mash beats even adds the 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 voice note where java just describes his verse like he just describes why he spoke about princess diana why even spoke about um uh doti who was like the 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 counterpart to princess diana um so it's really like a well sequenced album well structured not much to say concerning like um never ride because yeah man it's, it's a great song you know everyone knows that by now but i think everyone should give a spin to this specific album and with this album i think it was a great album man um besides having like a mini problems with you know a few songs but um i'm feeling like this was probably one of the best albums i've ever heard in 2022 and um yeah so mash beats man he's he's really stunning and he's really about the work and credit to mash beats man and may he just keep giving us good music and yeah just keep giving us the great compilation albums and yeah so like comment share subscribe to whatever you do i don't know what you do share the content um spread the word um this is religion out now on all dsps